Welcome to the Rusted Garden. This is the third video in a series about five or six for 2018 on growing large tomatoes. So if you've not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. Every week I do about two or three new vegetable gardening videos and this way you'll also be able to get the updates on the rest of the videos in this series. So just subscribe, you can click the little button in the bottom right corner of the screen. Today we're going to talk about top dressing, how that differs from top dressing when the plants are smaller. The main difference is we're not going to use a lot of nitrogen now. So I'll talk about the value of the NP and K you use for top dressing your tomato plants when they start to bear fruit. And I'll show you how to go through that whole process. We're also going to talk about pruning. I'll help you identify tomato suckers and make decisions on whether or not you want to um, prune your plants back and why you might do that. I'll also show you how to tie the tomato plants up to the stakes. So they're starting to fall over now. So this is the point you want to have them really grow vertically and that's just really to help manage pests and disease and, and I'll show you how to simply do that. I'm also going to show you how to spray these with a baking soda spray. Always test spray before you put new sprays on your plants if you've not used them before. You want to check for possible damage. But I'll talk about the routines for spraying, for feeding, and really how to keep these guys going. And this series is also hosting the grow off that I challenged Cali Kim to on the west coast. We're each growing a red beefsteak tomato. I started mine as seeds. She started hers indoors as transplants. When this guy was uh, last shown in video number two, it was only about this big. So in 19 days, it's really taken off. The rains have slowed, the heat has come, and the plant is doing really, really well. And you can see the first flower clusters forming. That's where the winning tomato is going to be. Sorry, Kim. She and I did talk. She was concerned that on August 1st, her tomato wouldn't be big enough. So I agreed to, you know, extend the contest to the 21st to give her more time to try and beat me. No, I'm just kidding. We uh, spoke a little bit and realized that August 1st may not be enough time for the tomatoes to fully mature. So we're going to do a check-in on August 1st and we're going to do a check-in on August 21st. And still, contest rules are the same. Who has the biggest red beef steak? All right, so let's get into the garden here and let's start with uh, pruning. I'll talk to you about suckers, different ways you can prune your tomatoes. All right, this is my midnight snack, a 2017 All-America Selection, Selections winner. We're going to use this in a second. In the second video, I removed some of the leaves from the bottom, and that's to create a gap down here so that air circulates better under your plant and around your plant, and that helps with managing disease. I also took off a couple more leaves just before I started shooting this part, cut this one in half, Slowly work your way up. Every week remove a couple more so that you get an 8 to 12 inch gap under here. Don't do it all at once. You'll shock your plant. Now what exactly is a tomato sucker? You'll hear that word a lot. Tomato suckers. They are not bad. They actually turn into full production stems. This was a sucker. It became a full production stem. I'll explain that in a second. It produces tomatoes. The only reason you move, remove tomato suckers is to manage your plant size for the purposes of managing the size, dealing with pests, dealing with diseases, improve air circulation. It's an art, which means there's not an exact way to do it. Just prune based on the needs of your plants in your zone. So this branch was coming out here and the weight of it actually separated it a little bit from here. So I took it off. I want the gap there anyway. But let's pretend that this is in the ground it's rooted in and this is basically a tomato plant. You start with the main stem coming up and as you come up you get you continue a leaf. up the stem some more you get a leaf, another leaf and between the leaf and the stem is, an, is another sucker and you could keep that if you want to. As we get up higher you have a stem, a leaf and here's another sucker. It will become a full production stem. And as we come up higher here, you see flowers and it continues going up. There's more flowers here. So a sucker really turns into a full production stem, its own tomato basically, where it will have leaves and flowers and bear fruit. So you get to decide how many you want to remove. Again, pruning is not a science. It's more of an art. Take and remove what you want based on the needs of your plant in your zone. Now, to tie this plant off. You just want to get jute, pieces of towel, anything that's not going to be so thin that it cuts into the stem of your plant. Gently tie it to your stake. Leave a big ring, a big gap. You don't want to pull the stem tightly against the pole 
because it's still going to grow. You don't want to choke it off. And it will look just something like this. Just a nice gap. And we'll gently guide this tomato up here as we go. All right, we're going to move along. I'll talk to you more about pruning. I'll remove suckers, cut out the bottom, and just show you how I manage my plants. Again, not an exact science, just a basic set of principles to manage the size of your plant. All right, so I lifted this guy up, tied him off to the stake. Be careful. You don't damage the fruit that's on there when you're moving it to the stake. Wanted to show you again what the suckers are turning into. So as we start down at the bottom, the main stem right here goes all the way down to the ground. As you come up, you have your leaf, main stem, right in there. That's a tiny sucker that will grow into a full production stem with its own flowers. I don't want that one there, so I'm going to remove it. I have one coming up here. Because I'm making the gap of four to eight inches between the soil or mulch and the bottom leaves, I want to remove some of them. That's all I'm going to remove for now. In about a week, I'll remove some more. Now, I'm going to keep this sucker right here. Main stem, leaf, a tiny little sucker like the one I just removed grew into this. This is a production stem and it probably, right in there, it's starting to grow flowers. I'm going to let this continue to grow and I will stake it right up the stake. I'll add another one if needed. So I have the main stem coming up and now I'm leaving another sucker to form a production stem. So I'm splitting it into two. And then up here is another leaf, the main stem that's connected to the ground by roots. And right in there, another sucker that has grown nice and large. It's got its own flower cluster. I'm going to let this grow too. Now, you don't have to just remove a sucker down here and get rid of it. You can let it grow for a bit, grow two or three clusters of flowers. And, and here's the second cluster right in there. And then just cut the growing tip. So the flowers will mature into fruit, of course, but you're cutting the tip and you're managing the size that way. So you can prune two ways. You can totally remove the sucker out of there, or you can let the sucker develop a couple flower clusters, like right in here, and then cut the growing tip and just collect the fruit that way. That's one way to manage size. All right, let's go to another plant, continue talking about suckers and pruning and removing them. So this is my Valentine, a 2018 All-America Selections winner. Lots of leaves down there. Even in that second video, I removed some, but you can see that they came back. Again, go ahead, cut out some of the leaves from the bottom, build that gap. Always use something sharp. You don't want to try and break it off with your hand because sometimes it doesn't clean break and you peel off a lot of the outer layer of the stem when you do it that way. Coming out of the main stem, this is a full production vine, another sucker that's gotten big. I don't want that one down there. I'm going to remove that. You can see, I don't know if you can see that. I'll try and turn it. Lots of fruit forming. Here's another sucker way out here. I'm going to actually tie that to the cage. This year, I'm going to prune a little bit less. Gently tie it here. Whoa so that it stays and guide it right up the stake or the cage or whatever you're using. Again, there's no rhyme or reason or science behind it, but there are principles and that's just to thin it out, manage the size, let airflow go through. And you can see tomatoes growing right there. I want to keep those. Now, out of this sucker that came out of the main stem, it will then also produce its own suckers. I know it gets confusing. So out of this stem, here's the main stem coming up, the leaf. Right in here, this is going to turn into a production vine. I don't want that. I want to manage the size a little bit, but I want to keep the fruit right here. So I remove that one, take it out. Here's another one right in here. Got a, let's see if you can see it. Got the stem right here, the leaf right here, right in that V. Another production stem will form. Remove that. That just cleans it up a little bit, cuts the size back a little, but I'm managing it up the trellis. And I will just go ahead and kind of tuck these in and out of the cage here and weave it, you know, the tomato up this type of cage. All right, one more example. 
Um, again, I want you to follow this as principles, not exact science. But when we're done, you're going to know what a sucker is, you're going to know that it's a production um, vine, you're going to know that it produces tomatoes, and you're going to decide what you'd like to do with them on your plants. So this guy in the back is my Candyland Red. It's another All America Selections winner from 2016. This is the only plant that I've found in here of my, uh, I think, eight plants that has some disease markings on there. Those dots right there, it's probably a leaf spot. And you can see it more down here. Luckily, I've been spraying. It's contained. I'm not that worried. But you do want to get in and remove any leaf that has the disease. Even though just one little leaf had that. Let's see if we can show it better in the camera. Right there, across from my thumb. Just because one leaf had it, you don't just remove this leaf. Take all of them, okay? Take the whole branch off. Because if it's there and it's active, it's probably spread out through here and you just want to be safe. So I'm going to remove everything from the bottom. Definitely a little bit more than I did on the other plants because this is showing some signs of disease. That's a nice size gap right there. I'll go through, check out the different plants. That one looks like it's problematic. Remove that. That was a sucker right in there. We'll let that grow. There's a leaf. We'll keep that. But that's cleaned it up. I'll make sure I get in here and spray and watch this even more closely. But look at these tiny little tomatoes. They're going to be delicious. They're small and really, really sweet. All kinds of clusters forming in there. I don't need to tie this off. It's staying within the rings of this cage. But I will drop a stake in here later that weaves down here, provides more support because this is going to get really, really tall. So in each case, check out your tomato, decide, decide what's going on, and remove as appropriate. There are no other suckers I need to remove out of there. You know what? We might as well do the last two tomatoes. These are Chef Choice yellow and chef choice green different winners from all america selections so get in to the bottom again trim out a couple of inches let's see get over there hard to do with the camera in my hand but that's all you want to do for this plant it's that tall don't take too many bottom leaves, but that's just to get it started so that, again, the air circulates through. Inside of here, there's a lot of different suckers growing. That's one right there, main stem, right there, leaf, sucker. I'm going to let them grow a little bit because I think I'm going to prune this variety because it's growing a little bit differently than the other ones. By letting the suckers grow, create a cluster of flowers, and then I'm going to remove the growing tip because this year I'm going to go for um, a little bit less pruning and just see how my plants do that way. Again, every year try something different. So this is another tomato, but this one's kind of cool because it's doing something that merits a different kind of pruning. I can go ahead, cut these out. Let's remove them. It's pretty tall, so I'm taking more than I did in the other ones. So I've got my full gap there right now. But as you come up, you can see that it's naturally divided into two stems. So you go from one stem to a V. The one on the left is a sucker that I let mature. So I'm going to grow this as two main stems. I'll put in another stake to support this. This one will go right up here on the left. Now the other one I have to remove is the sucker right there. That was a leaf coming out there and you can just snap it off. So I'm going to grow this as a double stem and I'll show you what that looks like over time. That's just one method of pruning that you can go ahead and use. All right, so all the tomatoes have been cleaned up, tied off to their stakes. I removed some of the branches from the bottom to let airflow go and we'll let them go for a bit now. So let me show you what the top dressing looks like. Now that they've been pruned back, there's fruit producing, we're going to feed them with the top dressing a little bit differently than if they were smaller. No nitrogen. Or low nitrogen actually. Okay, let's get to top dressing. 
Tip number one, we are taught to overfeed and love our plants. They don't need a lot of fertilizer. They don't need high numbers of N, P, and K. They just need a slow, steady supply of what nature intends. And compost, if you don't know, is well below a 111 N, P, and K. So if you can make plenty of compost and you have compost in your garden, you don't really need any of these products. But at production, when your plants, your tomato plants are producing fruit, they're flowering and the fruit is coming in, it's okay to give them a top dressing. If you had compost, we would just be putting the compost down on top of here. That would work. We don't always have that. So a couple of things. When your plants to this point, you don't want to use a high nitrogen fertilizer. For instance, blood meal is a 1200. It's all nitrogen. You wouldn't want to put that down now because you're going to get way too much leaf growth. We want to go with something that's slow and low and low in the N, P, and K. So here's a 344. Go ahead and use that. Now, I don't want you to stress out about these numbers. If you have a general organic fertilizer, a 555, you can use that. I also do recommend earthworm castings. That's a 0.6, a 0.7, a 0.2. That's a perfect top dressing for your plants. Slow and low, and plus worm castings have everything you need to really have a healthy plant because that's what nature intended. Top dressing is simple. I'm reaching into the bag of the 322. That's about a tablespoon. You're just going to sprinkle it around the outside of your plant. One to two tablespoons. One tablespoon right here. I'd put another tablespoon on the other side. A couple inches away from the stem. As you water, this will get into the surface. Tomatoes send out a lot of surface roots. It'll absorb the nutrients from your top dressing. Worm castings, same thing, probably a little bit more, maybe two or three tablespoons. Just sprinkle it around the outside. That was about one tablespoon. Scratch it into the surface, water it in. You could just go with compost, you could just use worm castings, you could just use the organic fertilizer, I am really focusing on making this bed um, more of a worm casting test bed, so I'm using worm castings more in this area. That's perfectly fine. You can do whatever you want. The whole idea is don't overdo it. So now that this has been top dressed, I'll go do all the plants. That's all I'll really do for top dressing for these plants. Maybe if they're doing really well, Later July, 1st of August, I'll give them another top dressing. From this point on, I'll just be using water-soluble fertilizers every 10 to 14 days, fish emulsion, um, worm compost tea, something again with a low N, P, and K. And that's basically all you have to do to top dress. You're just giving them a boost of a low N, P, and K. You want the nitrogen to be down low. You don't want it to be up high like a in 12 like meal because the high nitrogen is just going to get you a lot of leaf growth. You don't want that right now. Now, that being said, suppose we had a disease outbreak. We lost a lot of leaves. We controlled the disease. We would actually then want to add in some higher nitrogen, get the suckers growing better in between here. There's a sucker right in there, in case you forgot. Um, Get them more nitrogen, so get your leaves back, get the suckers growing, and help your plant kind of reestablish the leaves it's lost from disease. But if everything's going well, low NPK, top dress, water in. Okay, after you top dress your plants, water them in nicely. That will really help the fertilizer start to combine with your soil. Now, you may have noticed I'm growing a lot of cherry type and small tomatoes in here. This series is on growing large tomatoes. The principles are all exactly the same, but the main focus of the series is this red beefsteak tomato that I started from seed. So in the series, you're going to see how this guy grows. Now I removed some of the leaves from the bottom. I didn't remove any of the suckers yet. You can see one growing right in there in the joint, and you can see one flower cluster. One of the principles that you can use for growing large tomatoes is to really remove a lot of the flower clusters and let more of the leaves stay. The leaves take in the energy, the energy goes to the only fruit that's on the plant, you end up with larger tomatoes. I'm not sure how I want to do this yet. I also did a side dressing here before this is really flowering and having fruit. I did it a little bit early, but I am trying to win a contest so it's getting a little more 
fertilizer love than it might need and it should be okay. I just want to hit home, don't over nitrogen your tomato plant. You'll get way too many leaves. It causes insect problems. It causes disease problems. All right, now for spraying. I'm using a baking soda spray. I recommend you just pick up a one gallon container. Mark on here what you use it for. You don't want to be mixing um, different things in there. Sometimes um, you may have containers you may use for harsher chemicals in your yard and then you go and you put in a baking soda spray and you got remains in there and then it damages your plant. Just make sure you keep your organic container for organic products. So this is baking soda spray, one to two tablespoons per gallon. Again, I always recommend test spray before you use any sprays. It's just two tablespoons of baking soda and water. You don't need oil, you don't need anything else. And you're just going to spray, whoop, just sprayed myself. Spray the tops of the leaves, and then you're gonna make sure you get under there and spray the undersides. You wanna do this every seven to 14 days depending on what comes into your garden. For instance, on the East Coast, in my area, I get leaf spot, I get early blight. I don't get late blight. On the West Coast, sometimes they don't get these diseases, but they have more insects that come into their garden. So every garden zone is going to be different. The key is to know what comes into your garden, start spraying two to four weeks before it shows up, and then just keep a regular pattern going. Now, I can let this go you know, 10 to 14 days if I don't have a lot of rain. If I'm getting a lot of rain, I'm gonna come back and do it again. Couple of tips, baking soda raises the pH on your leaves. By raising the pH level on the leaves, the bad fungi can establish, they don't have the environment they like to grow, so they don't grow. You can use wettable sulfur, that lowers the pH on your leaves. Does the same thing, makes the fungi that you don't want have difficulty establishing on your leaves. Baking soda, wettable sulfur is great for prevention, but if you get an outbreak, it can slow it. It doesn't usually stop it. So again, we got baking soda, wettable sulfur. Then you can go to a product, I think it's called Serenade. It's organic, it works well. It helps stop outbreaks. However, you gotta spray regularly and depending on what's going on, the, the diseases can still progress. Dacanol is a human-made chemical. A lot of people don't use, like using chemicals. In the case that you have a bad outbreak of a disease, it may wipe out all your crops, you may want to consider it. I would use Dacanol in a different container, and I would use it in a very targeted way to stop an outbreak. I wouldn't use that from the beginning. But I just want you to know there's different products. You can use baking soda, wettable sulfur, serenade, Dacanil. Start with the most organic, most gentle, work your way up as needed. And again, you wanna just make sure you go and spray the tops down really well, nice fine mist, spray the undersides. Baking soda doesn't need to have soap or oil added to it. All right, I think that covers the spraying, top dressing, pruning, that's enough for now. Please subscribe to the channel. There'll be at least two more videos, if not three, on growing large tomatoes to a contest size where I am going to beat Callie Kim. Thanks for watching. Please check out my seed shop at www.therustedgarden.com. Thanks.